All right. We believe in dispensationalism. In other words, that we should divide things to the right group of people, the right time period in the Bible. Because if you do not do that, how do you know that the doctrine that you're teaching, the doctrines that those verses are saying, is going to apply to you or to the right time period? If you don't, you're going to mingle all doctrines together and come up with confusion. Now, this thing will be extremely helpful. It's going to be a little difficult for me to draw, so I hope that the people online can put up with me on this one. But basically, I'm going to show you, based off of Clarence Larkin's chart, the different time periods, and then we're, I'm going to put the different groups of people. Not only that, I'm going to put the specific books of the Bible in each time period and group of people. I'm going to put the specific books of the Bible in it, and that way it will be extremely helpful. Okay, the first thing is going to be creation. Creation. So because I'm going to be drawing this on the board, it's going to take a while, so you'll have plenty of time to draw this too if you want to draw it in your paper. So creation is the first timeline, and we put that at Genesis 1 through 3. In creation, in this timeline right here, we do know that before the fall of Adam, their salvation was different. It was basically, do not eat the fruit off the tree. If you do, then basically what happens? You lose your salvation, you're lost. You remain in a saved state as long as you do not eat the fruit of the tree in the Garden of Eden. So we see right here that the tree in the Garden of Eden... That was their salvation plan. It's different. So it's in Genesis 1 through 3. That's where the doctrine applies. Now, conscience is the next one. Conscience. In conscience, it would go from Genesis 4 through 50. Genesis chapter 4 all the way to the end of 50. This would also include the book of Job. The book of Job. Because Job lived among this timeline. In the age of conscience, you got to realize this, that their salvation was dependent upon what their conscience showed them on the plan of salvation. So depending on how well they lived in their conscience, that's where their salvation was dependent upon. That's why it makes sense that at Genesis chapter 6, what did God see in the conscience of man? It was evil continually. So because it was evil continually, that's why it makes sense that during that timeline that God had to judge them and drown the whole world. In fact, they all died in their sins and went to hell, excluding Noah. Noah was the one, the Bible says, that was just and right with God. Job, you, re you recall that he had to live according to the best, according to his conscience as well. He would talk about himself being pure in his conscience, trying to live clean for God, that he never done this wrong or that wrong. There was no law of Moses at times, so salvation was dependent upon the conscience. During the next time period, it is the law, the law. During the time period of the law, it would cover the majority of your Old Testament. That's going to be important to know. So it's going to cover from all the way from the book of Exodus to Malachi. Malachi. The entire Old Testament. So any doctrine that you see here would apply to the law. <clears throat> During the time of the law, we would see that's where Moses existed. Now, I also forgot to mention Abraham right here. I should have put Abraham right here. So I'll put Noah, and then I'll squeeze in Abraham. You'll notice that in Abraham, such as James chapter 2, it mentions that faith without works is dead, and that Abraham was justified by faith and works. How? Faith when he believed in the stars of the seed, and then works when he offered up his son Isaac. So why is his salvation different from ours? It's because he went by conscience, see? He had to go by what was best in his conscience. So because of this, we see right here that, this, that Abraham, he had to go by what is best according to his conscience. According to his conscience. 
Then we had the law right here, Moses. So the problem is, is that we see during the time of conscience, it was completely failure. We see how the children of Israel, they would let God down. People commit sin after sin. So God had to make it more specific now. He had to say, I can't just let them go by their conscience. I'm going to have to make it more detailed. That's why the law existed. Because it's not just showing the law of the conscience, but making it written now. Written where it can be specific in detail. He will tell them which one to observe, certain days to observe, how to perform the sacrifice, which morals, immoral sins they shouldn't be committing, and which morals they should be upholding. Now, during this timeline, we also see another day and age where David existed. David, he had to live according to the best of the law. The only difference with David, though, however, is that he received what the Bible says, the sure mercies of David. When he committed the sin of adultery and murder, according to the law, he should have been stoned to death. However, David, he found special favor with God. Because the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. Out of all the people in the Old Testament, David was the one who had a very close relationship, spent a lot of time in God, and he even rejoiced in the law. So God made David a very special case. Then we come to the first coming. The first coming. So during the entire Old Testament, their salvation, their lifestyle was dependent upon the law. And the first coming, that's when Jesus came to the scene. During the timeline of Jesus, it would cover from the book of Matthew to John. Matthew to John. During this time, it was under the ministry of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, when he was preaching, he was preaching toward Jews. And when he was preaching toward Jews, baptism, as well as confession of sins, was involved. And they had to do these things to retain themselves as the people of God. And then, after John the Baptist, during this timeline, Jesus obviously came to the scene. Now, here's where things became very different with Jesus. We see right here, during this time, it went through creation, things were different. People had to go by conscience. Then God had to aim toward a specific group of people, Jews, toward the law. And then what happened right here during the first coming, John the Baptist was preparing the Jews for this Messiah. But when Jesus came to the scene, which is going to be very important, this is where things became different. When Jesus came to the scenes, what he introduced was addressing to both the Jews and as well as Christians. So because of that, you're going to see in these book of the Bible a dual doctrine where you will find some doctrines applying to Christians, some doctrines applying to Jews, especially a lot about end times and tribulation events. During this time period, it's all Old Testament Jewish. Over here, everyone had to go by conscience. During this time, it was just Adam and Eve, and they had to go by not partaking the fruit. So we see a lot of Christian and Jewish doctrines. Then over here, during the church age, this is where things really come into play. The church age, what it's going to cover is that it's going to cover two separate categories. So this is what's going to be extremely important, otherwise you're going to mess up in doctrine. Over here, we're going to see in one category, it's going to be the book of Acts and general epistles. General epistles cover from the book of Hebrews to Revelation. So the general epistles will go from Hebrews, and then we're going to include the book of prophecy as well, Revelation. This is the first category. The second category is going to go from Romans to Philemon. So when people say you have to get baptized and confess your sin, because they're going all the way from some book called Matthew chapter 3, that's wrong. Because look at the time period right here. So you'll see right here, the time period is different. And not only that, the group of people is also different. 
So this one will not apply to this timeline. In this timeline, this is where we exist, the church age. So if someone pulls up a verse from here or here, or somewhere here, to apply to here, then it's going to be wrong. It's going to be wrong. Now remember this, in Matthew and John, it's both Jews and Christians. So there will be some verses in these four books that can apply to Christians, but not all. Because Jesus was ministering to two people, remember, Jews and Christians. Now, because Jesus was teaching this ministry, what do you think the apostles did? So here comes the apostles. And when the apostles came to the scenery, they also had to teach what? Both Jewish and Christian doctrines. You might say, why is that? Because they were trained under Jesus' ministry. And because they were obviously trained under Jesus' ministry, that's obviously the kind of teaching they're going to give. So this is the books of the Bible that goes with the apostles. And these books of the Bible that go with the apostles, they're going to obviously then contain what? Both Jewish and Christian doctrines. Here, however, we see that things are different. Because why? Because Paul is, his ministry is supposed to be aimed toward non-Jews, to Gentiles. So God says, Paul, you're not supposed to go to Jerusalem even. Why? Because his ministry was to the Gentiles. That's why his teaching is going to be different from Jesus and the Apostles' ministry. What he's going to do is what? Not take the Jewish aspect. He's going to take the Christian aspect. So in Romans to Philemon, that's where Christian doctrine applies. So that's where we get our teachings from. So the answer, which is extremely helpful in dispensationalism, is that... All these verses in the Bible, if they contradict Romans to Philemon, this one too, because remember, this is Jews and Christians. So these books too, if they contradict Romans to Philemon, then you cross them out. If there are verses here that we can match with Christians, then you can use them. Now, Paul's ministry... From here we go to the second coming, the second coming. Now before I continue, I just want to clarify something here, that way people don't uh, accuse me of teaching something wrong. If there is one book, one book, Paul can do Jewish, it's going to be this book. That's going to be important. If Paul is the author of Hebrews, then this will be the only exception. But that should not be difficult to see as an exception because look at the title. See, Hebrews. So that should be obvious then that this will be applying to Jews. So it's not going to be Christian teachings from Paul. It's going to be Jewish. Uh, but right here, you'll notice from all these headings of the title that they are Gentile, that they are not Jewish. Now, let's continue right here. The second coming. The second coming. Now, in the second coming, and I'm running out of space right here, so I'm just going to make this very small. I mean, after all, it's only seven years, right? So, I mean, it's going to be very small anyway. Here is the tribulation. The tribulation. So, in the tribulation, which can approximately go for seven years... We call this the second coming. Because why? The first coming of Jesus. But now he's coming the second time. And when he comes in the second time in the tribulation, what's he going to do? In these verses right here, how you're going to find the right kind of books in the Bible to match, it's going to be what? Verses that talk about end times. So when you find verses that talk about the end times, then we know which parts in the Bible apply to the tribulation? Well, how do you know? Because the verses you're going to find out talking about day of the Lord, the end of days, when the Messiah comes, He restores Israel in the future. So these verses, and you'll know their tribulation. But a cheating, uh, the shorter one to know, an easier way to know, which is going to be obvious, is these books. So, Revelation, Acts, and Hebrews. Uh, Acts, Hebrews to Revelation. Acts and Hebrews to Revelation. You might say, and including the book of Matthew to John. Now, the question is, why are these particular books 
applying to the tribulation. Remember, these two particular books are aimed toward Jewish people, toward Jewish people. It can include some Christian things as well. So remember, there's this dual application. Don't forget that dual application, Jews and Christian, in Matthew and John, and Acts to Hebrews. Okay? But how do we know that in these particular books it talks about tribulation? Because here's the thing. Do you know why these books are applying to Jews? You might say, why so, preacher? Because Jesus and the apostles were talking about end times events. When they're talking about end times events, they're talking about Jewish. If you look at the Old Testament, that's going to be very obvious. In the Old Testament, it prophesied when the Messiah comes, there's going to be an end of days, a tribulation. That's why when the Messiah came, he was preaching a lot about end of days to Jews. That's why the apostles, when they were preaching to the Jews, talked a lot about end of days. That's why Paul, when he wrote Hebrews to Jews, was talking a lot about end of days. That's why these books will go right here. As you know, in this first coming, the end of days didn't happen. It didn't happen. So it's going to apply where? Here, the second coming. Now we come to the kingdom. The kingdom. Obviously, in the tribulation, you have to endure to the end. You have to not take the mark of the beast. So there are faith and works involved for salvation. Faith and works involved for salvation. Why is it faith and works? Because it's obvious. Do not take the mark of the beast. You must resist the mark. You must resist the Antichrist persecution. That's a lot of working. In the church age, why did they proclaim faith without works? Salvation only by Jesus Christ. Because they didn't have doctrines that go from Jewish. See, Jewish or end times. Now, right here in the kingdom, it will be the millennium. The millennium. In this millennium, so I'll just put a thousand years, I'll be simpler to write. A thousand years, their salvation is going to be works, not faith. Why is that? The reason why is because of these two passages. Now, to find verses on the kingdoms, you're going to also find verses where it talks about kingdom. That's it. So all you have to do is find verses about the kingdom. That's why it makes sense... That the kingdom of heaven, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, the Sermon on the Mount, it's going to apply to the millennium. Why? Because Jesus was talking about a physical kingdom that the Jews were looking for. And that was the physical kingdom that God brought at the millennium. So find any verse in the Bible that talks about the kingdom. If you read the Old Testament, doesn't it talk a lot about a future kingdom for Israel? Yeah, but when does it happen? Right here. So all you have to do is find verses in the Old Testament that talk about the future kingdom. The New Testament will mention some stuff about the future kingdom too. So find those verses and apply it to here. That's how you're going to find it. How we know salvation is not by faith but works is because faith is something you believe in without seeing. So everyone sees Jesus Christ. So because of that, obviously you don't need faith. But why are works in, are involved? Works are involved because you are in a perfect kingdom without sin. So God requires humans who live in this kingdom to not commit sin. So that's why it's going to be works right here in the kingdom. So you see right here, this is how it's, what's going to be very helpful in dispensationalism. I apologize for the messed up chart. I should have made it smaller. But from here, I hope you can understand. If you're wondering, when I read my Bible, how do I know which verse applies to me and which verse applies to somebody else? What's going to be extremely helpful is this. You divide it by timeline and by different people. How do I know the timeline and different people? It's all charted out right here. It'll make it easy. We have creation, conscience, law, first coming, church age, second coming, and kingdom. These are all based off of Larkin's chart. And then you'll notice the books of the Bible specifically mention on which time period and which group of people. So that will be extremely helpful. Where are we, preacher? We are right here, the church age, and this is us. Because Paul is speaking to not Jews here, but to Gentiles. In these books of the Bible, though, it speaks to both Jews and Christians. 
So you're going to have to find which one applies to Christian, which one to Jew, by seeing which matches this one right here.